Meteorologist Austin Onik, this is Weather Overtime. We are live and direct from downtown Chattanooga, Tennessee. If you're just joining us, welcome to the show. Maybe you've never been here before. Uh, if you haven't, this is again our opportunity to talk about what's going on with weather and glad to have you along. We'll answer any questions that we possibly can. Uh, if we can't answer anything directly, we'll let you know and we'll do some research and we'll try to help you out on that. We're coming to you from the areas around southeast Tennessee, northwest Georgia, northeastern Alabama and extreme western North Carolina. This is our online video weather blog. It's a Q&A session. Again, if you want to talk about various and certain things, we'll be glad to talk about what we can. But primarily for the people who live in this area, if you want to know more about what's happening, we can help you understand a little bit more about what's going on with the weather. Coming up, we've got, again, hurricane season in full swing, and we may be looking at the D-named storm coming up here relatively soon depending on what goes on we also have the risk of severe weather we also see a lesser chance of flash flooding good news on that plus if you're a weather photographer your opportunity to participate for a calendar that is seen worldwide from the World Meteorological Organization. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little while, so stay tuned for that. Looks like everything is where it needs to be on Twitch and YouTube, so we're going to go ahead and get going. First off, we'll talk about what's happening again with the current weather situation, uh, which for right now, again, northwest Georgia, northeast Alabama, southeast Tennessee, and a small small portion of western North Carolina. That's the News 12 viewing area. What's left of those thunderstorms from earlier on? The worst possibility of anything strong is way down to the south of Atlanta around Athens and down into around Macon. That's where we're getting the worst of the activity there and that moving away from us. Now we may see the possibility of a shower or a thunderstorm. We've still got some showers well back up to the north of us. Let me switch over to Nashville radar real quick. A uh, few showers north of I-40 and northwest of Knoxville, but beyond that, just really not that much going on uh, at this time. So good news there. Now, we, again, are going to be seeing the potential of more problems coming up as we go into tomorrow with that threat of severe weather out there. And that is going to be something that could be a little iffy into tomorrow afternoon. We'll talk about that in just a little while as well. Uh, current setup again for severe weather tonight. We still have a marginal threat from the Tennessee line and areas of southeast Tennessee. That issued by the Storm Prediction Center uh, not too long ago. So as of right now, let me just take a quick look here to make certain we're still on course. Uh, this latest forecast you see from the Storm Prediction Center was issued at about 8.12 Central Time, so about half an hour ago as you're seeing this on the recording. So we still have the potential of some thunderstorms here. Worst potential is going to be well back up to our north and east. And then we see for tomorrow the threat, again, mainly shifting back to the northwest. We see a marginal threat here for the rest of the News 12 viewing area. That's going to be about as good as it gets uh, for tomorrow. So there is still going to be the chance of some stronger weather into tomorrow. Now for Wednesday, peak of the week, the chance is more of a generic threat. There's not that much that's going to be possible here. So we will see the severe threat, Columbus, Indianapolis, up towards Chicago, Kansas City, Omaha, and Lincoln, Nebraska. Could be picking up the worst of the worst activity, but we're going to be concerned mainly with what's going to be happening tomorrow with, again, that potential threat. And that is where we see that possibility of maybe some damaging winds and the possibility of an isolated tornado threat. So that is something that we are really going to have to take a look at and keep an eye on for right now. Uh, temperatures into the area, we'll get to that in just a little bit. Again, decently quiet from downtown. Not that much going on at this time. Uh, looking off to the southwest around Lookout Mountain, far enough into the distance. And out where there was a lot of rainfall coming through earlier, Plainview Outdoor Advertising Camera overlooking the Chattanooga Airport and watching those storms roll away into the distance. News 12 Studios from the Patriot Concrete Camera, north flank of Lookout Mountain, and things again very much on the quiet side here. Uh, back toward around the area of uh, 
Ruby Falls. You can see the entrance taking place there, but otherwise good visibility. Downtown from the North Shore into and around the Chattanooga Theater Center. A lot of rain coming through here earlier and also on the Chattanooga Zoo webcam to where we picked up a pretty decent amount of rain. It looks like the lights, well, we're pointing off to the southwest. Hopefully you haven't lost power in this area, but uh, that's a good possibility. And uh, let's just do one more here from Chattanooga Red Wolf Stadium where there is a decent amount of construction traffic but doesn't look like too much for right now so everything moving along pretty nicely in all directions so good news for monday night 70 <coughs> excuse me 74 current temperature where we went from 90 to 74 in a very short amount of time thanks to that rain and thunderstorms that moved through the area what we've got into tonight should be a potential of a shower or a thunderstorm maybe some here and there outside of those showers up around i-40 there's really not that much and all that activity down to the south continuing down that direction what we've got is an area of high pressure which is doing a very good job of pushing moisture up from the Gulf of Mexico across much of the southeast U.S. We've got this dying stationary front left over and into the course of the next couple of days we will be looking for uh, the possibility of some more showers and thunderstorms. It looks like most of this storm system to our northwest will be staying up that direction so what we will see is high pressure pretty well dominating the southeast United States, but also giving us the potential of some more thunderstorms possible into and around the area. You can have a big dome of high pressure, but you can have pop-up showers and thunderstorms underneath that dome of high pressure if you have a decent amount of moisture in the atmosphere, enough instability, and enough energy from the sun shining down that direction. So it is possible that we could see a very decent, a very healthy amount of rainfall coming up over the next several days. But what we are not seeing at this time, and this is the really good news from all the rainfall we've picked up over the last few days, it does not look that we are going to be getting a huge amount of rainfall as in another inch and a half to two inches. It looks like most of that is going well north and back to our east and southeast. So with lesser amounts of rainfall, which is very good news at this time, it looks like even though we have a chance of flash flooding tonight and into tomorrow, slight possibility of some activity going on here. Uh, again, please remember, turn around, don't drown, find another way to get to where you're going. That threat will recede even farther on Wednesday and continue back up to the north on Thursday. So I do not see anything happening in the way of very heavy rainfall and flash flooding. What is possible, again, is going to be that threat of severe weather as long as that front is going to be in the area. And then, unfortunately, as we go into the next several days, uh, you may remember through most of July, we had some very good amounts of below normal temperatures. That party is over with. Unfortunately, we've got less in the way of cooler weather or below normal. And as of right now, we are going well up on the above normal scale. So for right now, the chances of us picking up anything relaxingly below normal is absolutely not going to be happening and we are going to be back in the soup again into the next several days warm and muggy at night and also looking again at the potential of some dangerously hot heat uh, best possibility will be back to our west but then we'll see more activity coming our way into the course of the next several days the next month or so does not hold out much hope of anything cooling off. In fact, staying on the hot side as we get into the next several days. So basically what this means as we go to our seven-day forecast is going to be uh, the potential for, again, watching for the numbers to really heat up into the next several days. So for right now, temperatures into tomorrow, mid-90s with that marginal risk of severe weather possible. And then flirting with 100 degrees going toward the middle to end part of the week. And then stabilizing a little bit in the mid-90s, just above normal for this time of the year. Lower to mid-90s possible here. And it looks like if everything holds past this forecast into the first 
full week of August, we will see temperatures stay back in the lower to mid 90s. So lots of heat, lots of humidity, and maybe not record breaking, but it is going to be pretty stifling around here. Lows in the lower to mid 70s, that's as far down as we go at nighttime, and that's it. Then we get into the mid 90s for highs. Plenty of heat, plenty of humidity. We've got vacation Bible school. We've got marching band practice. We've got football, softball, soccer, baseball, water, volleyball, two-a-days going on uh, as we get back to the classroom coming up pretty soon. It's going to be a very uh, stifling atmosphere out there, so it is not going to be good where it comes to any potential of cooler weather. We're going into August little of any possibility of really some nice crisp cool autumn temperatures we can stay in the 90s easily as we go into october and i hope that's not the case right now but so far we are watching for that potential and we do have that capability of staying very hot for a long period of time and that's exactly what it looks like what we're going into at this point so for right now that appears to be the rule uh, for us and any chance of anything changing is just really not in our wheelhouse. We also have to take into account the tropics and we're going to forget at this point in time uh, what's going on in the Pacific. There are about three systems all the way over here but we're also mainly looking right now at the area into and around the Caribbean and also into the area close to closer to the United States. Uh, if you haven't paid attention to the forecast out here and you're planning any travel anytime soon, uh, it is going to be, again, the potential for a problem. We've got our next storm system, which could become the D name storm. Now, if you're looking out here and saying, what storm system? Well, in a way, you would kind of be right because we don't see anything here really developing just yet right now in the next two days the possibility is basically zero percent so we're looking again at a 40 to 60 percent chance of developing and that's what it gets for right now but as this area moves over the warmer waters gets away from the dry dusty air thank you sahara desert for that that could see a rapid increase in the development of our next storm system so Here's what it's looking for. Again, if you're taking a cruise, if you're going to uh, anywhere around Grenada, Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, anywhere out in the Leeward Islands, St. Thomas, St. Croix, the Bahamas, anything like that, anywhere in this oval area shaped here, this squashed kidney bean looking area, that is where the National Hurricane Center is watching for potential development end of this week into this next weekend. And you're saying, okay, well, great, there's nothing going on right now. What are we so worried about? And if, if we were supposed to be worried, why doesn't this have a designation? Well, if it did have a designation, it would be a lot further along developmentally. It's not at this point. The potential is there. It just hasn't really started going just yet. Usually when these storm systems start to spin up, when they start to show a little bit more cohesion, a little bit more spin, that is where we may see, again, the storm given an investigation area. You see them all the time, Invest 94, Invest 95. This does not have an invest yet. It is not a designation as an investigation area. So we don't have any of those spaghetti models that we could show you, but it's a good possibility that that is going to be coming up very, very soon. So into the next couple of days, this system could become a tropical depression, possibly even a tropical storm getting a name. And again, as it goes toward the Bahamas, that is where we may see some problems. We don't see anything as of right now, but it is possible that we could see that any point in time in the next week, which means that if you're heading again anywhere ocean bound, beach bound anytime soon, you really need to watch this system with a lot of interest because if you're heading for an area where this storm is heading towards, you're going to want to turn around and get out of there because you don't want to be stuck even in a tropical storm. The amenities could be cut off, the power supply could be damaged, uh, traffic could be snarled. You don't want to be heading into a place where a storm is heading toward you. It's just not a very good idea for any 
thing, including your own safety. So this really needs to be watched over the next several days. So keep it tuned to News 12 uh, for more details, and we'll keep you updated on that. From News 12 viewer Gage Bell from Saudi Daisy, a nice view of a bumblebee for all the uh, apiarists out there. Uh, here's one for you today uh, from Flat Top Mountain Farm. Never been there, but hopefully going to try one of these days. That's our Langley Roofing weather window picture of the day. And if you've got pictures, we'd love to see them and show them so send them in to us at our social media pages email them to us or again go to wdef.com slash photos for more detail now talking about that if you are a hand at photography and you would like to maybe submit your picture to a much bigger contest if i can find it here i know i had it here someplace uh, if you would like to know more about this, this is really a neat opportunity. The World Meteorological Organization holds these competitions every single year. And the 2025 calendar competition is on now. It's one of the most, as they say, the anti most anticipated annual activities uh, to where you can send in information and pictures for uh, this particular calendar for the competition itself. The competition will align with the theme of World Meteorological Day 2025. Coming up next year, it's called Closing the Early Warning Gap Together, focusing on the Early Warnings for All initiative. Not everybody in the world is, is quite as blessed as America, Canada, back into the European Union with tons of warning and weather information. So the idea of getting information about cyclones, about tsunamis, about droughts to everybody on the planet, that's one of the initiatives of the World Meteorological Organization. The winning photographs will be printed in the WMO 2025 calendar. They'll be showcased on the WMO website, social media platforms, public outreach products, and prominently in our World Meteorological Day 2025 celebrations. That's coming up in February of next year. They will also be promoted among other United Nations agencies. Lots of recognition, no financial reward. So just know that again to where you start off with there if you'd like to know more you can enter you have to fill out an entry form uh, all photos have to be a minimum of 4,000 by 3,000 pixels jpeg or tiff format all photos must be in landscape format black and white as well as color photography will be accepted and all photos must be clearly captioned including a title location and date Deadline for entry is September 1st of this year. So you've got just about a month and a day, roughly, before this entry is closed. So if you'd like to submit your pictures, great opportunity to do so and become worldwide famous for your entries. These, by the way, right here are pictures of former pictures of the day from the Langley Roofing Weather Window Picture of the Day. These are what our viewers have sent in as some of their pictures. Did not have time to get the captions on here, but again, we do have great examples of weather photography right around this area. Thank you all very much for that, and please consider submitting your pictures for the World Meteorological Organization's 2025 calendar competition. be really nice to see that and have somebody from a local perspective win on that. All right, so for tonight, we have a very neat question uh, in regards to wetlands. They are a very important part of the environment of the planet, and they help to both to absorb pollutants. They also are good carbon sinks. They are home to thousands of different species. They also slow down storm surge and can protect against some of the worst storm surges out there. For every mile of coastline that has wetlands and those areas that can act as speed bumps, then the better off a protected area will be with those wetlands. So they are vital to keeping everybody 
safe and in, out of harm's way. It's a really neat idea that, to promote this. And if you'd like to know more, all you have to do is go to our website where we have tons more about this. But for tonight, our friendinroofing.com weather poll of the day, which state actually has the most wetlands? And Alaska coming in first with 43% of the vote. Texas winding up with 0%. That's a bit surprising. 21% in Florida, 36% of you voted for Louisiana. The actual winning vote was Alaska, where actually 43% of the state is registered as having some form of wetlands. That's a lot of territory, but that's why Alaska takes the crown on this particular uh, title on there. So really need to take a look at that. Oh, it is also World Tiger Day. I forgot about that. So if you have a favorite tiger out there besides Hobbs, uh, time to celebrate with World Tiger Day. Good opportunity to, again, learn more about how, how and what we can all do to protect our planet when it comes to anything and everything that it needs protection against. So please, uh, everybody vote in our poll of a new one up at midnight. Happy World Tiger Day and more on your Pay, or on your uh, playing our next uh, poll of the day that'll be coming up tomorrow but thanks to everybody who voted in our poll for earlier on this afternoon thank you very much on that that should probably pretty well do it i think for tonight we've been on for just about 20 minutes not a lot going on as it is but i think we've managed to cover everything for right now questions if you have anything in the way of concerns if you'd like to see more of something on weather overtime less of something Email address at, let me make certain I'm pointing in the right direction, wdef.com, aonic at. And if you'd like to know more, go to our website at wdef.com slash weather for more details there. So that should wrap it up for Monday night. Again, please keep it tuned to News 12 because tomorrow afternoon we may be looking at more chances of thunderstorms heading our way. And some of those could be on the strong to severe side. So please keep it tuned and we'll keep you updated on what's going on there. Chip Chapman's got your forecast bright and early on Tuesday morning, so stay tuned there. Live and direct from downtown Chattanooga, Monday evening, the last Monday of the month of July, the 29th. I'm again Chief Meteorologist Austin Onyx. Stay tuned for much more with News 12 on air and online, and we'll see you again for Weather Overtime on Tuesday evening. Thanks for joining us.